You can't go wrong with a good cup of tea. Cheers. Welcome to a new YouTube series called Trigwell's Tea, where I'm going to be spilling the tea on all things music, music industry related stuff, what it's really like to be a musician, and answering any questions that you might have. I feel like this industry is often shrouded in a lot of mystery, so I'm going to try and shed a light on some of that. Let's go. So one thing that I get asked a lot about is the process of making my debut album, Red. Gotta get that promo. <laughs> For those of you who maybe don't know me, Red is my debut album. I independently released it. I started out busking and then uploading videos to YouTube and then touring. And then I got to a point where I really just wanted to make a body of work, an album of original material. And that is Red. So through the process of recording, writing, mixing, mastering, marketing the album, I learned a hell of a lot of things. And so today I'm going to be talking about what I learned from making an album. The first point to make is it's really expensive. <laughs> so I guess it depends on how you want to do it, but I put everything into this album because I wanted it to be such high quality. I wanted it to stand up with things that major labels were releasing. Not just the recording and the mixing and the mastering process, but also the marketing, the artwork. There's so many different things that goes into making a body of work and getting it out there to people. For me, having a body of work and my debut album as something that I would be proud of forever, in terms of how it sounds, but also in terms of how I released it, it was worth eating a lot of baked beans for, <laughs> let's just say that. If I could go back and make the album again, but for cheaper, I wouldn't do it. I'd keep it exactly as it is now. I just love it. The second point, it takes a hell of a long time. So it's not just the writing that goes into the album. So I think the oldest song that actually ended up going on the album in terms of when I wrote it is Taboo. And I'm pretty sure that I wrote that, well, it will be, nearly five years ago now, or four years. Um, so yeah, there's years of work that go into an album. Different parts of the process, like mixing and mastering, and even recording the thing, you are sort of at the mercy of other people's diaries, which if you're like, yeah, I wanna do an album, let's do it, is fine, but obviously those people have got work booked in and you can't just rock up and be like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> it took a bit longer than I thought it might do just because certain services weren't available to me when I was ready to have them, which is completely understandable. You know, people have work booked in, but I think if I could go back and do it again, I might have planned it out slightly differently. The reason why the album was slightly delayed in its release was that the first mix that we had of the album was really good but there were certain things that could have been tighter and more polished. So we ended up doing a whole new mix of the album, which obviously took quite a bit of time, but I'm really glad that we made the decision to do that. So when I say we, I mean myself and the producer, Ben Travers, we sort of sat down and listened to everything and thought this could be slightly more polished. And I'm really glad that we did that because now there's nothing that I regret <laughs> and there's nothing that I would change when I listen back to it. It's exactly how I wanted it to be. So, so even though it was delayed going out, it was definitely the right decision. Okay, number three. There is a trade-off pretty much always in, certainly in pop music or in singer-songwriter commercial stuff now. There's a trade-off in music between commercial and natural. So what I'm saying is there were certain decisions made that were commercial and they were usually to do with song length. So if a song was super, super long and was gonna be one that we took to radio or, um, you know, a song that was gonna be a single, then maybe we would cut that down to let's say the magic three minutes, um, just so that it was kind of more punchy, maybe it got to the first chorus quicker, maybe some of the instrumental bits were taken out, for the single versions anyway, 
Um, and of course those are commercial decisions which I haven't had much experience of making previously but they didn't feel too bad to me. Every commercial decision made in terms of like song length and stuff like that was, you know, it was a decision that felt good. There was nothing where it was like, oh, we're going to cut two minutes out of this song and it's going to be half as good as it was before. It was always like, we need to cut a section out to make it shorter, to make it punchier, to be a single. And we did it in a way that I felt like was tasteful, so I was cool with that. There were other decisions with the album that were purely about having the album feel like um, natural and representative of me and emotionally real, I guess. So an example of one of those decisions was including the song Mum and Dad on the album. I guess it's not a hugely commercial song, but for my first album and being able to have that control creatively about what songs went on it and what didn't, I did get advice from different people and Mum and Dad definitely isn't like a single song and I think it's a little bit folkier and maybe softer than the sort of music I make now. Um, but I just love that song so much and that song means so much to me and I know that it means a lot to my parents and I really wanted it to be on this album. So that was an emotional decision, but there were commercial decisions as well. And they sort of intertwined all the way through the process of making the album. Number four, following your gut instinct is really, really important. So I believe that gut instincts really show you the right way to go for you, no matter what it is. And it was reiterated to me by Quincy Jones, who I met at Montreal Jazz Festival, which was insane that, you know, following your gut instinct, especially when you're making art, is super, super important. Everybody has a gut instinct, so if you're asking people for advice about certain sounds and certain songs and that kind of thing and visuals and everything else that goes along with an album, you'll get a lot of different opinions and they'll all be, or most of them will be, gut instincts from people. But when it's your baby, <laughs> you really want to follow your own gut instincts. I can definitely say from my experience that when I follow my gut instinct with music, that music is the stuff that connects the best. And I just believe that that's because it's real and it's completely natural from my brain <laughs> and my heart and my soul. And it's real and it's not contrived and it just always does connect better than anything that has been too thought through, if that makes sense. So if you're a musician and you're thinking about which advice to take in terms of songs or lyrics or sounds, everybody has an opinion and everybody has a gut instinct. As the artist, I really do believe that it's important to follow your own because you need to take your own path and it needs to be directly from you. Number five, album reviews are glorious and absolutely brutal. <laughs> when you make an album, it is your baby. And if you followed your gut instinct, you feel like it completely represents you and you've sort of recorded and trapped a piece of your soul in there. Like I can't explain it. it this sounds really pretentious, but it, it just feels like you've sort of captured a part of your story, I guess, your journey in life and your emotional reactions to whatever's happened to you in the past. And it's a really, really personal thing. So when somebody says that that is great, and I, I was really lucky to get a lot of positive reviews for the album. I really feel lucky that people connected with it and reviewers in national press and international press liked it. That makes me feel really happy. I kind of prioritised my own creativity and um, just wanting to feel proud of this album for a long time over what I thought anybody else would think. So when good reviews did come in, I was so happy that somehow 
I'd managed to make something that I really liked and other people liked it as well. I thought that was great. I did get some reviews that weren't fantastic, let's say. Um, and it's brutal, like it hurts, it really does. Because it is so personal and even though I wasn't trying to please anyone with this album and actually one of the reviews that I had felt like I was trying to please a lot of people with this album and felt like it was too commercial sounding which I mean if it's standing up against things that are being released by major labels but it's also actually connecting emotionally with people then that's awesome um, so yeah, I kind of, I can twist that and, and rationalise that and feel good about that point. But, you know, when you, when you do get negative feedback about something that you've poured your heart and your soul into, it does hurt and it's good to have people around you who can help you rationalise those things. And yeah, maybe like absorb it and think about, um... Actually, no, just don't think about it. I always told myself when the album came out that I wouldn't read reviews because they didn't matter to me, but you know, I'm an artist. I crave feedback, all artists do. So I did read them and I felt a bit of internal pain and then I got over it. The most important thing has to be that you as the artist like the art that you've created. Otherwise, what's the point? Number six, and I've only got seven points, so I need to finish this cup of tea. Making an album or making any kind of collection of songs is a super fun, big chunk of life <laughs> for a musical artist. So my album, in terms of the audio creation, um, the recording, mixing, mastering of it, took about a year. And it's a big period of time to be in someone's basement <laughs> recording music but it is a really definitive part of my life and I went through a lot of highs and some lows and frustration and elation and joy and just all of the emotions all of the emotions and it's a period of time in my life that was super fun and I got to make my album with a bunch of my friends who happened to be really talented musicians which was Ace and meant that the final product was good quality. Thanks guys. If you were a musician and you get the chance to make a collection of songs or an album or whatever it might be and focus on making that and making that the best it can be for a period of time, there are memories that come along with that that are just priceless. If I could go back and do it again, I definitely wouldn't change anything. I think I would just try and appreciate each day more. So I appreciated each day but if you've ever seen the film about time it's about like a time traveller and in the end he goes back and just relives every day again. I would love to go back and just experience the whole thing again. Um, it was just ace man. Number seven, the final point, the final point. My tea has gone cold I'm going to take the last sip because sacred, sacred stuff. Releasing an album is not the end of a career. So when I was younger, I thought that artists or bands would release an album, climb on the back of a white unicorn and ride off <laughs> into the sunset, never to be seen again, just enjoying the glory of everything that had just happened forever, for eternity. But no. Life continues, who knew? Yes, I've done my debut album. I'm never gonna do a debut album again. And for me, that was kind of a sad realization, but the songs are out now and there's no white unicorn. <laughs> Luckily for me, I absolutely love making music and I'm just obsessed with it. I don't believe my passion for writing songs is ever gonna fade. So I've already written a hell of a lot of new music, a hell of a lot of new songs that I'm getting into the studio to record and I do have a release plan for those songs. I'm not gonna tell you about it now but it's gonna be a challenge. I'll probably talk about it in another Trigwell's Tea episode, who knows. Just really hope I can continue releasing music for a very long time. It brings me a hell of a lot of joy. And if you guys keep connecting emotionally to this music, that makes all the hard work 
worth it. I've already started sharing some of the brand new song demos with people over on Patreon. I'll put a link below so you can check that out. And I want to say thank you so much to Joe Alex and Dexter and Wanda for being platinum members and supporting me so much. Thank you so much to everybody who's supported me on Patreon. I really, really appreciate it. I'm actually really buzzing today because I've just sent off my next single to be mastered. So at the end of this week, I will have a new single ready to go. And that is a very exciting prospect. So maybe I will share a preview with you soon. But until then, I will see you maybe at the next Trigwell's Tea.